Can the most powerful Snapdragon X Elite laptop beat out Apple's M3 MacBook Air? Well, in this video, we have the Galaxy Book 4 Edge with the absolute fastest X Elite, the 84 SKU. So we're gonna be testing everything, including design, ports, displays, keyboards, trackpads, SSDs, performance, and yes, battery life, because both of these are at 100%. We're gonna unplug them right now, and and we are gonna see which one holds up better. Now, even though you can tell that the chassis on the 16-inch Book 4 Edge is larger than the 15-inch MacBook Air, the MacBook actually has a battery that's 19% bigger in terms of the watt hours. And right here you can see all of the specs above and the big takeaway is that the MacBook Air is actually $150 more expensive if you spec it the same with one terabyte SSD and 16 gigs of RAM. Now for the battery test, I do have it in best performance mode because if you don't have it there, it cuts down the performance like crazy. It's gonna be a lot slower than the MacBook. So you have to have it in best performance. And I do wanna mention that this is a 120 Hertz display display, so we are gonna have it in that mode because if you're buying it, you wanna make the most out of it, which is a big advantage compared to the MacBook Air. Most people are just gonna leave it default. And I do wanna mention that this has adaptive refresh rate that goes down to 48 hertz, which is actually a benefit over the 60 hertz MacBook Air. This is also a 400 nit display compared to 500, so that's an additional benefit in terms of battery life. And speaking of the displays, the one on the Samsung is mind-blowingly good. It's their Super AMOLED, and as you can tell, everything just pops so much more. It actually looks brighter, even though the nit rating is lower than the MacBook, so that's kind of interesting for HDR at least, but the colors are popping, it looks amazing. In terms of reflection, I almost feel like the Samsung is less reflective than Apple's MacBook Air, which is crazy because Apple's usually the best, but it's on a whole nother level when you dim the lights down, you can see the massive difference in the colors just popping, the brightness, everything looks amazing, and the blacks are perfectly black compared to the LCD panel of the MacBook Air, which looks super gray, terrible when the lights are off. So in terms of the display, Samsung wins out by far, especially with the 120 Hertz and everything else. Now in terms of the design, they both have a really nice aluminum metal chassis. You can see once again, the footprint is quite a bit bigger on the Book 4 Edge. In terms of the thickness, the MacBook Air is definitely thinner here where the wedge is at, but on the other side, they're basically the same thickness. Now in terms of the ports, the MacBook has the MagSafe 3 connector, which I love because it's magnetic, really convenient. Now it also has two USB-C ports, which are called USB 4, but they technically support the Thunderbolt features like daisy chaining. On the other hand, the Samsung just has two USB 4 ports, no daisy chaining on those, has HDMI right here. On the other side, they both have the headphone jack and the Samsung comes with a micro SD card slot and a USB-A. So the Samsung wins in terms of the ports and I do really like this thin design that they did on the side. And as for the weight, the Samsung is a little bit heavier, 3.42 pounds compared to 3.3. And now of course we gotta do our classic speaker test. So let's see which one is better. I don't know what you guys heard, but to me, the MacBook Air destroyed the Samsung. This thing is all highs. It just feels so dull. There's no bass, so the voice even sounds just kind of empty, whereas the MacBook Air now has a six speaker system with two new subs added to it, so it's so full and rich, just destroys it. Now let's do a quick webcam and microphone test. This is the webcam on the Galaxy Book 4 Edge. And then here we have the webcam and the microphone on the 15 inch M3 MacBook Air. Let me know which one's better down below. And the last thing I wanna do before I jump into the performance is compare the keyboards and the trackpads. Now, to me, I really like these new Magic Keys on the MacBooks. They're very clicky. Compared to the Samsung, 
These kind of feel a little bit mushy to me, but of course, it's up to what you prefer. But the track pads, the one on the MacBook is definitely the winner. It's a force touch trackpad, so it doesn't actually move at all. It just has a magnet that vibrates behind it, whereas the Samsung has that traditional diving board design, which honestly, I can't stand it. I hate it. It is junk. I'm sorry, but it just is not good compared to newer options like the Microsoft Surface Laptop 7 has an amazing trackpad that's no longer a diving board design. And now jumping into performance, I wanna do a quick battery life checkup and surprisingly, the Samsung's at 92% while the MacBook's at 91. So somehow the Samsung is winning, wow. Excellent chip on basically standby, doing well so far. I've got Crystal Disk Mark open right here on the Samsung with the one terabyte SSD. This MacBook here actually has a 512, so the write speed should be slower. This is technically the $1,700 version. Of course, it's $1,900 if you get one terabyte, so it does become more expensive if they're similarly spec. so let's run this. It looks like the Book 4 Edge is about 250 megabytes per second faster in terms of the read speed, but in terms of the write, the MacBook's about 140 faster, so they're really, really close and both fast enough. And now let's jump into Geekbench 6. You can see both of these have 16 gigabytes of RAM. We have the Apple M3 on the right, and we have the best SKU of the X Elite. Yes, that's the 84 SKU that clocks up to 4.2 gigahertz dual core boost. So this is the only laptop that you can get the best chip in. So let's Let's run the CPU test. We have our scores and look at that. The MacBook has over 3000 points in single core, so it's 8.5% faster than the Book 4 Edge with the X Elite 84 SKU. But this Samsung is quite a bit faster in terms of multi-core, 14.5% faster to be exact. Now keep in mind, this is on battery power with best performance enabled. You can see it right here. And of course this machine does get quite a lot faster, over 15,500 points if you plug it into power, but because the main selling point of the X Elite chip is battery life, I wanna test everything on battery power because what's the point of buying one of these X Elite laptops if you have to be plugged in to get the full performance? So we're testing it like this, but keep in mind, you can get more performance if you plug in. And now I wanna test Speedometer 3.0, which is basically gonna test the performance of web browsing snappiness and web-based apps as well. And by the way, we have the optimized Safari on the MacBook and we have Edge on the Book 4 Edge. We got the scores, 36.1 for the Mac, 26.5 for the Samsung. That's 36% faster for this MacBook Air. Let me actually test Chrome on both as well. And it looks like with Chrome, the XLE is a little bit faster, 28.2, but the MacBook also got faster, 38.7, 37% faster than the Samsung. And now let's test web design performance using Figma. And this, by the way, is a project provided to us by 500 Designs, the best design studio in Cali. And the first thing I wanna do is test out the loading speed. So I'm gonna zoom in right here, see how long it takes. I mean, look at that. I mean, it looks pretty dang good to me. Nice and sharp. Let's do the same thing on this guy right here. Just like that, I mean, high quality, nice, loaded up quickly. And now let's go ahead and export 12 layers and see which one finishes first. And there you go, they're finished, and it looks like the MacBook took a minute and 36 seconds, while the Book 4 Edge with the X Elite took a minute and 49 seconds, so 13 seconds longer, but still, both of them are very quick and snappy. And now let's do a quick graphics test. This is 3 d Mark's Steel Nomad Lite, which is their newest, latest, most modern gaming benchmark that takes advantage of this modern hardware. Let's do the unlimited mode. So this is running and I just noticed something very annoying on the Samsung. The fans are running loud and I'm hearing this high pitched coil noise. Do you guys hear that? That is extremely annoying. So the MacBook Air finished, we have 25, 
6.1 FPS. Let's see what the Book 4 Edge gets. The Samsung's done and it has just over 17 FPS. So it looks like the M3 chip has 46% more FPS in this test, which is a realistic gaming benchmark. So the crazy thing is, I wouldn't even recommend the M3 chip if you want to do gaming. You got to get at least the M3 Pro and definitely the M3 Max if you're serious. And this is quite a lot slower. So this is definitely not a gaming laptop. It's more a thin and light web browser and maybe a little bit of CPU productivity laptop. And speaking of CPU performance, let's jump into Cinebench 2024 to test the multi-core performance. Let's just start with a single run to start. And holy smokes, the fan is going insane on this laptop. Of course, we have no fans on the MacBook Air, so it's not gonna be able to stay as cool. And wow, guys, I cannot believe this difference. The Samsung got 969 points compared to 592 on the 15 inch M3 MacBook Air. That makes this X Elite 64% faster in this test, despite only being 14.5% faster in Geekbench 6's multi-core test. And that is probably of course due to this MacBook Air being fanless, which is its biggest downside in terms of long-term all out 100% CPU workloads. Now I really wanted to test the GPU benchmark within Cinebench 2024, but it looks like the X Elite cannot run it because it, I think, doesn't have ray tracing support, so it can't even run this test while the M3 does. So let's do Blender. Here we have the Party Tug project on both. I have cycles set on both, and I do wanna mention that Blender is not native with the X Elite chip right now. So you can see it's an X86 app, which means it is gonna be emulating. And other reviewers have said that the emulation loses about 10 to 15% performance compared to native. And if I go into the settings, I wanna mention that the GPU acceleration is not working because, well, I guess it's not native and nothing's working. So it might even be defaulting to the CPU, whereas, the M3 chip is gonna be using the full Metal RT ray tracing GPU acceleration. Let's see what we can get in terms of performance. All right, they're finished rendering and holy smokes, guys, there's a huge difference. The Book 4 Edge with the X Elite finished in seven minutes and 35 seconds compared to two minutes and 37 on the M3 MacBook Air. That's basically a third of the time, I can't believe it. Three times faster, that's probably due to the ray tracing and the GPU acceleration, which is not working on this machine. And of course you have the x86 emulation. And I did confirm that it's not using GPU at all. It's using the CPU, but it was limited to only 74% utilization for some reason. Same with the RAM, it wasn't being utilized. So something is throttling this machine and I'm not sure what it is. But with that said, if you're doing something like Blender 3D rendering, you probably don't want to get the X Elite for that. But now let's test something that is ARM64 native, which is the regular version of Lightroom right here on the Samsung. You can see ARM64. So what I have right here is 50 42 megapixel images set up on both of these. So let's test out the snappiness and how quickly it loads up before we export them. All right, let's click right. And it looks like both of them are loading pretty quickly. Nice and quick on the Samsung, keeping up very well. The only downside is I can hear the fans already. We got the same output settings on both, JPEG small, 90%. We have screen output sharpening set to standard. Everything's the same. Let's go ahead and export. And wow, I was not expecting this. Even without GPU acceleration, the Book 4 Edge finished in a minute and 16 seconds compared to a minute and 42 on the M3 MacBook Air. So that is actually 
very, very fast. This CPU is working so well. And just in case you're curious, I have a Lightroom Classic right here, which is going to be emulated an x86 app with the X Elite, so we can see how much performance you lose if it's not native. I'm going to change the settings to exactly what we had in the native version. We have quality 90, we have sharpen screen standard on both. Let's see what we get. And look at that. The funny thing is that the scores actually switched a little bit. The M3 now took a minute and 18 seconds, so it got a performance boost in Lightroom Classic, while the X Elite slowed down to a minute and 31 seconds, which is honestly still very fast and impressive, even with emulating x86 so i'd say it still works just fine in emulation Whew. all right guys that was a bunch of performance testing so with all of that said it's time to do the final battery life test before i jump into my conclusion and my thoughts let's look at the x elite book for edge what do we have 40 percent battery life remaining. Wow, that's pretty good for all that testing. It's been a few hours of me filming this and on the Mac, 48%. So the M3 15 inch MacBook Air is definitely better in terms of battery life. Keep in mind, it does have a larger battery by about 19 and a half percent. So that's quite interesting. Now, I do wanna say that this is extremely impressive for the X Elite, especially considering the really, really good multi-core performance, because if this was an Intel x86 machine, this would have already been so low that I would have had to plug it in. It literally would have died after all this performance testing, so I've gotta say I am shocked and so glad that we finally have a good ARM-based chip in a Windows laptop with the X Elite. Overall, for snappiness, web browsing, multi-core CPU performance, especially in longer-term tasks like Cinebench, this thing is killing it. Absolutely amazing laptop right here with the X Elite chip. The only downside is, first of all, you have the lack of ray tracing. That's a downside for people who care about that. And the GPU is extremely underwhelming. It is very, very weak. It's slower than the one in the M3, and I wouldn't even recommend Mac people to get the M3 for gaming or for rendering or anything else. We recommend the M3 Pro, M3 Max. So if you don't care about graphics, this is literally a game changer. Windows laptop people out there, you've got to get yourself one of these because it is absolutely amazing for a thin and light laptop. I am so impressed. And while there are some things that I don't like about this laptop, like the trackpad, which sucks, the speakers aren't great, in terms of the value you get with the specs, I mean, 16 gigs of RAM, one terabyte SSD, the insanely good display for $150 less than a similarly specced 15 inch M3 MacBook Air, I can say that finally Windows laptops are amazing again, especially in terms of value, thanks to the X Elite chip. Bravo Qualcomm, I am so impressed by this. So with that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know your thoughts on this test down in the comment section below. By the way, we are gonna be testing the M3 Pro chip. I know a lot of you guys are complaining that we're doing the M3 versus the X Elite. Yes, we will do the M3 Pro, so click the button above to subscribe to see videos like that. Definitely check out one of those two right there, and we will see you in the next video.